Hi, my name's Jessica and I'm from Jessica's Craft Time. I'm looking forward to a bit of a whip and chat today, but I thought I'd do a couple of reviews on some canvases that I have completed since we last spoke. So this one here is a full rhinestone. You can see the sparkle and the glitter on it. It's called Glam Glamorous Sky and it's from, whoops, sorry I knocked you. Um, and I do apologize for the heater in the background. It's a bit chilly today. Um, and this one is from Star Ore. So I'll put the links below where I got it from. But I just love the colors in this. You've got a little person standing here. Um, it was a really, really nice canvas to work on. I did have a few um, rubbish drills, but... From what I understand with your rhinestones, you do get more because of the coatings and things that have to be put on them. So I had enough to finish it. Loved, loved working on this. Um, it's got your nice soft felt sort of back with the scalloped edges on your fabric. So you've got no fraying. Um, there wasn't much excess glue around the edge, but I always tend to put the washi tape around the edge because... At the moment, especially, it's winter here, so I tend to quite often have fluffy tops on. So even if there's only a little tiny bit of glue on the edge, I tend to uh, get fluff stuck in it. So I always tend to put a, a washi tape, and I just thought this glitter one was perfect for this one. Um, I like the design, and I'll definitely be shopping with her again. So yeah, that was my Star All Glamorous Night. The other one that I have completed is called Two, I think she calls it Two Cats. And this is from Shoalhaven Diamond Dots. Um, if you've been around my page, you'll know that I love Shoalhaven. I love the fact that she's got quick postage. Um, this one worked up really, really nicely. I love the glitters. And this one I haven't had before. This one here is like a transparent... Um, yeah rhinestone it was absolutely beautiful not sure what i'm going to do with it but enjoyed it um the symbols were really really easy to read and they were clear um there was very few rubbish in it yet again you've got your sparklies so you tend to have a little bit of rubbish but nothing i had well and truly enough to finish it and it worked really well so that is my two cats so really pretty special so i've been doing my specials lately um yeah so i'm working through uh smashing the specials with mystery of diamonds but we are back on to our dream catcher so i'm gonna work on this today while we have a bit of a chat where am i gonna work on i might flip it around this way let's work over here so I'll bring you down as far as I can bring you and let's start chatting and I've still got some questions here to go through. Oh, that was the other one I was going to show you. My pencil case. This one was from Shoalhaven as well. I love this little pencil case because I keep um, one out here to drill and whip and chat with you all. You can see you can fit quite a few things. I've got tweezers and trays, some washi tape, and then I keep my wax and places in this one. So let's get our wax and our... I just love the little case. I haven't sealed this one. I don't think I will. Um, there's not that much sticky left around the drills, and it's not really going to be bumped around. They're all stuck on there very well, so... Yeah, I'm not going to seal that one. That's my little pencil case. So, what have I been up to? Well, last weekend... Sorry, I'll just get myself set up first, I think. Because if I try and talk and set myself up at the same time, I will probably confuse myself. Alright, let's get some drills out. Alright, so yeah, last weekend we headed up to the Blue Mountains. It was my father-in-law's 60th and hubby and I help with the youth organization and we have a property in the Blue Mountains in Blackheath. 
it's right on the edge we've got our property runs into the bush which unfortunately during the summer fires this year we did lose four out of our five acres of fab of fabric of um bush of the property is what i'm trying to say words are not my friend today um but we were very lucky that the area of the property that burnt was just the bushland we didn't lose any of our structures or any of our sheds which our sheds would have been the first thing that went and our sheds is what holds all our tents and beds and mattresses and everything we need to do set up the tents up there so we do have a house on the property which was built by the organization by people involved in the organization so if it had have gone up it would have would have been quite heartbreaking for a lot of people um, my husband remembers as a child he's been going to this camp since he was eight when he first moved out from russia it's a russian um youth organization um so yeah they we we were lucky we'd gone up the day before the fire hit our property and it was scary we had the the big planes the big water bombers flying over our heads and you felt like you could touch them um I actually, I thought I'd be all right, but I couldn't handle it. I ended up leaving my husband there and went to one of the bigger towns about 15 minutes away and had to hang around there all day because then they closed the road so no one could get back and I couldn't get back to him. But we were lucky that day it didn't come. The following day we had another couple had gone up there that are part of the organization and they were told to evacuate that to leave the property and just hope that the firefighters could contain it and they did it was I've heard stories that it came up the back of the property and it got to what we call our tennis courts it's basically just a, a fenced off rectangle um, and it came up the hill and it just stopped and went back on itself so someone was looking out for us is all I can say but so we headed up there for the weekend um, just to get away from home and spend some time with our in-laws because it was my father-in-law's 60th and it was really nice just to be out it got cold it was down to one overnight up there so it got cold overnight but it was really nice we started the fire inside and had some good food and good company and celebrated his birthday because you know with everything going on at the moment it's hard to celebrate anything, so it was nice to be able to do it just instead of just a dinner for him. Um, we were able to go and spend the weekend with them up there. And I love going up there. Um, we went and checked out some of the lookouts that have been affected by fire. It's going to be a long time before the walking tracks and things are back up and open. The fire hit pretty, pretty hot there, so some of the trees are really struggling to come back to life but it will all come back eventually so that was that was a nice trip to get away from home without sort of you know being around other people and yeah so that was that was my weekend um this week's been okay son's back at preschool which he loves um they're doing, they're actually out riding their bikes today at preschool. Well, maybe it's started to rain. It's just drizzling. So I think I might have a wet, cold child by the time he gets home tonight. That's okay. You can just jump in the bath. So apart from that, I have just been, yeah, I haven't been doing much. Just trying to keep at home, just go out for, you know, a walk. We've been... We took his training wheels, or like he call, likes to call them, his um, stabilizers off his bike this week. So he's been practicing riding without his stabilizers, which hubby and I have been absolutely blown away with how quickly he's getting it. He's still a bit wobbly. He's, he, he's very good at getting distracted. So he'll be riding along and he'll like, oh, there's a bird, and turn his head and look. And then, of course, his hands turn and 
then the bike goes wobbly and he tries to correct himself and he overcorrects and ends up on the ground but that's all part of learning to ride your bike so we've been taking him out after preschool each day just so that he gets a bit of practice um, we live in a beautiful area here I'm right on the National Park but we live in a very quite a hilly area of Sydney so we do have to get in the car and drive to try and find him some sort of walking track that is not too hilly that he can practice on so we ended up down near Cronulla Beach yesterday that was a little bit busy um, we walked away from Cronulla once we got a bit further away from Cronulla it quietened down a little bit but everyone was very good that walked past. They sort of gave him a wide berth when he started wobbling a bit. So that was really nice. So we told him his, because he's outgrown his bike. He looks, he kind of looks a bit silly on it. But we said, you're not getting a new bike until, until you can ride without your stabilizers. We're not putting you on a new bike with stabilizers. So he's pretty excited about that. Oh. And I'm sure once he gets a new bike and he's a little bit bigger, it's a little bit bigger, it'll be a bit easier for him to, to control. Because, yeah, sometimes if he's riding too quick, he bumps his knees on the handlebars. So that's that's been about the extent of my week this week. Um, I've got, he, we're child free this weekend. He spends a lot of time with his grandparents. Um... They have him quite regularly over the weekend, which I miss him dearly, but I want him to have a really good relationship with his grandparents. So spending this time with them is important for him. So he'll head down there this weekend and spend some time with his grandparents. And they always have a blast. They, they don't stop. His favourite place, his favourite place to go it's my um, mother-in-law works at Wollongong University and his favorite place to go is the university so they have a big open um, what do you call it big open areas there with walking tracks and because it's a university it's very quiet there's not many people around so it's good that he's he loves going there because they can take him out during the day without being around a lot of people um, which at the moment we're trying to avoid too many crowds of anyone so he loves going there and he gets to ride his bike and they have ponds and he sees ducks and he has a ball so yeah I think this weekend we were going to do some gardening but it's looking like it's, I had a look before and it's 80% chance of rain on Saturday and 100% chance of rain on Sunday. So that's not going to be much use for gardening. It might be a uh, dotting and Xbox weekend, which is fine by me. I'm happy to sit and dot all weekend. Um, I'm just thinking of all all my friends and family in victoria um they're going through lockdown at the moment must be really really hard i know i'm missing the touch of other people which sounds a bit silly but you know i've still got my husband and i've still got my child but yeah i miss miss seeing my friends and giving them a big cuddle so yeah, thinking of everyone in Melbourne and what they're all going through, it must be so hard. From what I hear, people have stopped being friendly and they don't even say hello when you're walking. And I know you've all got masks on, but it's not hard to be polite. It's not hard to be nice. So, thinking of them all in Victoria at the moment. Hopefully, people start listening and they can get this under control because it's not very nice and fingers crossed New South Wales don't get any um any more cases or too many more cases it looks like with New South Wales most of the cases that are popping up they tend to contact trace them pretty quickly so 
they don't tend to um yeah spread too quickly which is good all right let's get on to some questions um have i ever had a side hustle or considered having one well i guess um my stampin up is my side hustle with my crafts um i do enjoy it i'm waiting eagerly for my new die cutting machine but with everything going on here postage is so slow except for shoalhaven for some reason shoalhaven can get it to me the next day she little hint she bribes her post people she takes some lollies and i think that's the only reason why it gets here so quickly it's crazy like it would have been it was just over a 12 hour turnaround time i reckon i probably ordered it my last order at like 2 p.m and it was here by 8 a.m the next morning crazy where other people seem to be taking absolutely forever like i got another one that i know that he said he was posting it on monday and it was express post envelope and it didn't show up here till friday so whether he actually posted it on monday i'm not sure Maybe he got distracted and didn't get to the post office. But yeah, so um, the other thing I do is my Norwex, which I haven't spoken about on my channel. But Norwex have a range of cleaning cloths that are made out of microfiber and use basically water. Most of the time just water to clean. Um, if you've got some stubborn stubborn areas or areas that are a little bit heavier heavier soiled um where was i over here then you can use um our we have enzyme based cleaning products so that's that's sort of my extra sides um i love my cleaning products i don't do nearly as much as i should with them in the way of advertising them but even just to have them at home and use them myself and know that i dropped that one then know that my um family's not being exposed to really harsh chemicals um to the point that you know i i can clean my bathroom while my son's having a bath it's great it means get two jobs done at one time obviously not the bath because he's in it but it's not hard to wipe the bath out once he gets out and dressed um, uh, this is all work related okay what is the it's all career and it's very hard I'm a stay at home mum How much time do you spend with your family? Well, it depends what family you're talking about. My immediate family, um, we're together most of the time. I need some more wax. Yeah, when I got my wax out already. Um, we're together most of the time. Except for preschool. Um, my hubby's, at the moment, he's at home. Um, he's currently looking for a new job, but other than him going to work every day, we spend most, most of our time together. And if we go to an event, they're generally together, except for when my son goes to my in-laws. Um, and then in that case, we normally have dinner with them every couple of weeks. Quite often they'll pick him up on a Friday night and, <coughs> excuse me, we'll head down there. On the Sunday night and have dinner with them and pick him up they're about 45 minutes away from where we are so it's not kind of around the corner but it doesn't take long to get there with my extended family so my mum and my brothers and sis my brother and sister um, generally I see them every school holidays because they're in Victoria and I'm in New South Wales now 2020 has been a stuffed up year I've only seen them once this year and I was very lucky to get that visit in. We managed to get down there just in between everything opening and everything closing again. 
which I'm really, really glad we went. Um, we didn't do any touristy things. We didn't go out. We just stayed at home, stayed at my mum's and then stayed at my sister's and just spent time with the family playing board games and taking the kids for a walk. So I'm really, really glad I made it down there for that because the way things are going at the moment, I'm not sure if I will make it for Christmas and I'm meant to be down there for Christmas this year. So I'm going to be really sad if I'm not because I miss my family, but if we're not, we're not, we'll just have to restart for next year. So we'll see how that goes. Why do I like spending time with them and time with them? Why? Well, they're my family. I love them. I love spending time. Your family is, to me, family is the most important thing. Um, we have fun together. We like exploring new things. So, you know, family, family is important to me. Um, I do have a small family on both sides, both my hubby's side and my side. So, you know, the people that are in it are important and I just enjoy spending time with them. I enjoy doing things with them. How do you watch? I don't know. What's your favorite family tradition? Bailey's breakfast for Christmas. So my parents started years ago when we were little kids that they alternated between families for Christmas because they found it my mum's side of the family was over two hours away. My dad's side of the family was in within half an hour. And we found it too much at Christmas time to try and go to one family and then get in the car and go to the other family. We did it once when we were older, like when all us kids had moved out of home and that was crazy. We had breakfast at my mum's, lunch at my mother-in-law's and then dinner at my grandmother's who was two hours away. And it was absolutely exhausting. So my parents, back when we were little, did alternating Christmases. So on Christmas day, we spent it with one side of the family. And then the following year, we spent it with the other side of the family. Didn't mean we didn't see the side of the family that we didn't spend it with. We normally saw them the week before or the week after or the day after. Um, but it meant that you didn't drive, spend your entire day driving. So when we got older, we started doing that with siblings, but with our partners as well. So one year I have, I'm one of three. We have all of us together with our partners. And then the following year we spend it with our partners' families, which works out really good because it means that every year, at least once every year, once every two years, we spend Christmas day with my siblings. But my grandmother, like I said, lived two hours away. So she lived on a property. So we started, what we'd do is we'd drive up Christmas Eve. Once everyone finished work, I worked in retail. So you're always working Christmas Eve. And then I'd jump in the car Christmas Eve and I'd drive up to my grandmother's. And we'd get there Christmas Eve. And then we had Christmas Day together. And if we were having lunch at my grandmother's, we didn't go anywhere. We got there and we stayed there the whole day which meant that we would get up and we would have Baileys for breakfast. So we'd make bacon and eggs for breakfast. We'd get up, we'd do um, the present opening, and then we'd have Baileys and eggs, uh, bacon and eggs for breakfast with Baileys. So we started our drinking very early. We all like a, a drink, my family, and we'd start the day off with drinking Baileys. And because we didn't have to go every, anywhere, it was a great day. Um, then my uncle and auntie would normally come out for lunch and yeah, we didn't have to go anywhere. When we went into town, sometimes we'd go into town and have lunch with my uncle and auntie and my cousins at their place. But what was good is my Nana had a van, so we could all fit in the van. So we only ever had to have one designated driver each year. 
So it meant the rest of us all could have a few drinks and relax. And I love spending Christmas like that. For me, Christmas is about spending time with your family. And yeah, we do everything from playing bocce. I don't know. We, we do all random stuff Christmas Day. So yeah, that's, that's sort of a tradition that I really liked having Bailey's for breakfast. Um, my grandmother has now since moved and my mum has moved into town which yet again we can still have Bailey's for breakfast because we don't need a driver because my auntie's house is within walking distance of my mother's house. So it means that even if we start the day off with Bailey's, we can just walk to my auntie's for lunch if we're having it at her place. So yeah, that would have to be my my favourite um, tradition. If I could change your relationship with a family member would you, if so, with whom? Um, I would probably change it with my cousins and try and see them a little bit more often. In saying that, as life moves on and we all get older, it's harder to catch up. People have their own lives and their own things to catch up with. So probably my cousins. I would probably try and spend a little bit more time with them. Um, do I ever wish I was raised differently? No, no, it would have been nice to have a little bit more money, but that's always, you know, but we, we had a very, very loving family. Um, things were tough, but you know, my parents, parents didn't let that affect us. I've got a spider. Let me just move. I've got a baby spider hanging here. Um, so no, I wouldn't change that. And that's sort of the rest of the questions. I've skipped over a lot because, um, have you ever hid anything or lied to your parents? Hmm. Probably. Don't most teenagers? I've got a spider. I've got to find him. Where's he connected to? There he is. Come on, little spider. I don't really want you in my face. Um, I'm sure I did as a teenager. I can't think of anything on the top of my head, but yeah. So how long have we been? I still have a bit of time. So what else? What else can we talk about? Nicknames. There's a question about nicknames. Do you or your family have nicknames for each other? Well. I don't really have a nickname, but my sister had a nickname. And her nickname is Monkey. And it's because when she was born, her ears stuck out like a monkey. And I thought my parents always joked about it until I actually looked back over photos. And they did. She looked a bit like a monkey. Until she grew into her features and, yeah, those ears sort of normalized but when she was born she had ears that stuck out so my parents nicknamed her monkey um my brother's is cj which is just his initials we've always just sort of called him cj i didn't really have a nickname my primary school teacher did give me a nickname and my middle name's lee and he used to call me sickily i don't know why that stuck for a bit during primary school. Um, do I wish I had more siblings? If so, why? No, no. I think I think three siblings is well and truly enough siblings to have. Mind you, you know, I don't think it would have hurt to have more. I don't want to be. Um, probably wouldn't have wanted to be an only child. My husband's an only child and um i'd really like my son not to be an only child so whether that happens or not i don't know we'll wait to see but um yeah no um, i'm quite happy with my three siblings we are quite close we don't chat a lot um we probably could chat a little bit more often but 
it doesn't change the fact that you know if any of us ever need anything we're always there for each other um we try and spend as much time as we can together i was concerned when i moved to new south wales because my son and my niece are 10 weeks apart and up until we moved and he was about 18 months old when we moved no he was probably younger he was probably not much oh yeah 17 months or so old they spent a lot of time together i spent a lot of time with my sister having our first children so close together we were sort of a bit of a support for each other um and i was very concerned that he would lose that relationship with my niece but because we try and make it down every school holidays, sometimes only for a couple of days, other times we spend a week or more, depending what's going on and whether they're planning on going away or what's happening in our lives. Um, I think they've still got a really good bond together. Every time I see them, they play more and more together and and you know before they used to play in the same room but they never really played together now they're actually playing together and and i think even though they only see each other a couple of times a year because when we do see each other they spend a long period of time together it's not oh no it's stuck it's not just an hour here an hour there they actually spend you know a couple of days together and they live together and they eat together and what's going on here um i think that's really bonded their relationships um they have got a really good relationship together so yeah i was i was nervous about moving to new south wales but because i've always lived with my family close to me But yeah, that's sort of, their relationship's been just as strong. They both talk about each other all the time. You know, we send each other cards and little things. So yeah, I, I, I miss being in Victoria. I miss seeing my friends around there. Our friendship group has been friends for a very long time. But it's nice to know that I can still spend time and whenever I want to, I can just hop in the car or jump on a plane and go down there. Obviously in normal times, not, not at the moment because that's just very hard. But yeah, that's a little bit about my family. Um, we've spoken about plans. I, like I said, I'm following along with Monsieur Diamonds doing Smashing the Specials at the moment. So I've completed two, but I've just got, I've got, I'm on my second tree. I've got a few more coming, which the unboxings won't be until later, but I've got a few more things that I've been doing coming up for that. So that's been fun. I wish I had known before I started this one here because I would have kept this one to do during it. I do like this dream catcher. That's another thing. I'm going to have to go and invest in some sort of um, folder to keep all my diamond paintings in. Because Hubby said that he doesn't want every wall in the house covered in diamond paintings. It's like, that's enough. No more up on the walls. So I need to start storing them. So if you've got any ideas on how you store them pop them below i'd love to hear at the moment mine are all just clipped together on like a pant hanger hanging off a bookcase but i really need to store them somewhere so all the ones like the smaller ones here i've got a couple of bigger ones but mainly my smaller ones i think because there's there is only so many spots in the house that you can put um diamond paintings there's only so many you can give away. I've got a couple I think I might frame and give away for raffles. So, you know, that might work that way. I just enjoy doing them. I don't really think about... There's a couple I've got that are 
I want to do up for gifts. And then there's two I got in. And then I got another two that I picked because I like the designs. And I think I'm going to change which ones I'm going to give as gifts. I think I've changed my mind. But I've got a little bit of time. They're not until next year. So I've got a bit of time for those ones. But I might finish up this row here and let you all go. Thank you for joining me. If you have any questions or anything you'd like to know about me, pop them in the comments below. Um, I'm really enjoying doing this one and sitting here chatting to you all. So I hope you all have a lovely rest of the week and a lovely weekend. And it's not too cold for you if you're in Australia and not too warm if you're in other parts of the world. Um, and just hope you all stay safe and look after each other. The world's a strange place at the moment and 2020 has not been a good year for most people. So we need to look out for each other. And check in on your mates, make sure they're doing alright. So yeah, I hope you all have a lovely week and a weekend. And I will chat, you, chat to you all soon. Um, if you like this video, think about giving me a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. I hope to see you all soon.